Before we learn to hack passwords, we need to know what hashing means. Hashing is a way of transforming any text into a fixed length string using a special function called a hash function. A hash function is like a magic box that takes any input and gives out a unique output. There are many different hash functions, such as MD5, SHA-1, and so on. If you want to learn more about them, you can check out computer file video. I'll leave the link in the description. The interesting thing about hashing is that it is irreversible. That means you cannot get back the original text from the hash. This is different from encryption, where you can decrypt the text using a key. Let me show you an example. If I hash the word password 123 using MD5, I get this hash. If I hash the word hello world 1234 using MD5, I get this hash. Notice that the hashes have the same length no matter how long the input is. Also notice that the hashes are very different, even though the inputs are similar. This is because hashing is very sensitive to any change in the input. Now, there is another technique called encoding, which is often confused with hashing. Encoding is a way of changing the format of the text, but not the content. For example, Base64 is a popular encoding method. If I encode the word password123 using Base64, I get this. You can see that the encoded text is longer than the original text, and it can be easily decoded back to the original text. So, how do we verify the text if we cannot reverse the hash? Well, we simply compare the hashes. When you sign up for a website, they will hash your password and store it in their database. When you log in again, they will hash your password again and see if it matches the stored hash. If it does, you are in. If not, you are out. But this also means that hashing is vulnerable to attacks. One of the common attacks is to use a rainbow table, which is a pre-computed list of hashes for common passwords. If an attacker gets access to the hashed passwords, they can use the rainbow table to find the matching passwords. This is where Hashcat comes in. Hashcat is a tool that can help us crack hashes using various methods, such as brute force, dictionary, mask, and so on. Let's see how to install and use Hashcat to crack some hashes. Hashcat can try different combinations of letters, numbers, and symbols, or it can use a list of words that are likely to be used as passwords. It can also use the power of your GPU to speed up the process. A GPU is a device that can perform many calculations at the same time. You can check out this video for the difference between a CPU and a GPU. Now that you have an idea of what Hashcat is and what it can do, let's see how to install it. If you are using Kali or Parrot OS, you don't need to install Hashcat because it is already included in these operating systems. If you are using Ubuntu or Debian, you can install Hashcat with this command. If you are using a Mac, you can install Hashcat with Homebrew, which is a package manager for Mac. Here is the command. If you are using another operating system, you can find the installation instructions for Hashcat on its website. After you have installed Hashcat, you can check its help menu with this command. The help menu shows you all the options and parameters that you can use with Hashcat. You can also see the list of supported hashing algorithms and modes. To use Hashcat, you will also need a word list. A word list is a file that contains a lot of words that can be used as passwords. One of the most famous password word lists is rocku.txt. It has a lot of common passwords that are used by many people. It is often used by penetration testers to crack passwords. You can find rocku.txt under user slash share slash word lists in Kali Linux, or you can download it from the link in the description. We need some hashes to work with. How do we get them? Well, we can use any online tool that can generate hashes for us. For example, we can use BrowserLink to create hashes for any input string. Let's make two hashes, one MD5 hash and one shell one hash for the string password 123. Yes, we know it's a very weak password, but we are using it to show you how easy it is to crack these passwords. Here are the hashes that we got from the tool. We can save these hashes in two files called md5.txt and shell1.txt. Now, how do we crack a password using Hashcat? Here is the basic command that we need to use. Let's break down this command. We have two flags, hyphen m and hyphen a. The hyphen M flag tells Hashcat what kind of hash we are dealing with. The hyphen A flag tells Hashcat 
what kind of attack we want to use. You can find the full list of hash types and attack modes here. Let's start with our MD5 hash. We will use the dictionary mode to crack it. This is a simple attack where we give Hashcat a list of words, rock you, and it will try each word as a password. We can tell Hashcat that we are using an MD5 hash by using the value zero. But Hashcat is smart enough to figure out the hash type by itself for common hashes. For the attack mode, we will use the dictionary mode, zero, with the flag hyphen A. With this command, Hashcat will quickly find the password for the hash, which is password 123. Now, let's try our SA hash. The hash mode value for SHA-1 is 100. Here is the command, and here is the result from Hashcat. Hashcat can crack almost any hash with different attack modes. Let's see some of the other attack modes and how they work. Dictionary attack hyphen a zero. We already saw this attack mode in our example. It is the default mode in Hashcat. It uses a word list to try passwords. The quality of the word list determines the success of the attack. Combinator attack, hyphen a one. The combinator attack will combine words from our word list to make new passwords. For example, if our word list has the words pass, 123, and hello, Hashcat will make a new word list like this. You can see that using a simple word list can give us many possibilities. This attack is useful if we have some clues about the password. But remember that the bigger the word list, the harder the attack. There are more attack modes in Hashcat, such as hybrid mode, permutation attack, rule-based attack, and so on. Each of these modes can help us crack passwords faster and easier. Now, of course, you need to learn how to protect yourself. The first and obvious step is to set strong passwords. The stronger the password is, the harder it is to crack it. You can check if your password has been exposed to the internet with haveibeenpawned.com. A more effective way is to add salts to password hashes. A salt is an additional string added to the existing password so the hash generated is different from the normal hash of a string. To crack a salted password, the attacker should know both the hash and salt values. This makes it harder to crack hashes using methods such as rainbow tables. We can further strengthen salting by using dynamic salts instead of static salts. We can write a function that generates a salt value for every string making it exponentially harder to crack a salted password. Thanks for watching, and as always stay safe.